they were here, they were they were working on the building. They really carried the first family day that we did. So well, no but I knew that this that was not gonna be my you know, after my year there I wasn't gonna be there anymore. And I thought, you know, we need to establish a new organization. So I I, I filed paperwork for a Redemption Gate Mission Society, which at first was a 501c3, just non-profit religious group, and then converted it actually to an actual church. And uh, and then we, driving down, I was thinking we need to get a building. I was driving down the street and a sign had just gone off on this building, right? I met the same realtor that we bought the house through. <laughs> and we came in and we walked in here. This place was, like up to about here, this, this, there were no bathrooms here. Uh, there was a wall here. This was a TV repair place. Everything back there was the repair area. There was just like a counter, and then up here was stuff with shelves and everything. None of this was here. Uh, it was all open, and it was, uh, and it had been here since the 70s or something. Oh, wow. And uh, and so um, I, I remember standing, you know, right about, right, it was right about here, right about where, where Jackie is, talking with the realtor. And I said, you know, we want to do a Christian mission. He goes, you know, that's really amazing. I don't think he was, he was Christian. He says, that's really amazing because the people that are selling this building are Christians and they want somebody to come in here. That's so uh, amazing. Oh, my God. So um, I don't remember what the listing price was, but I said, well, we'd like to offer them uh, 85 and which was lower than what they were asking for. They didn't even counter offer. They said yes. Wow. Because it was Christian ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Then something came up where we were going to have to spend money for an unexpected repair, and they, they dropped it another 2500 wow. Thank you. So we, got, we bought this building for $82,500 in 2008. Unbelievable. And the, 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 we accepted the offer last month for 368 so. Are they so, Christians? <laughs> no, we, we, we spent a long time trying to get a ministry to come in here to take over. Yeah. And in fact, we two years ago, we started looking. And we offered it to all the churches who had all the people we know, and we just never, that just never came together. Okay. And so we finally, and we, even up, all to the very end, we were going to give a big discount to somebody who would come in here to do it for a ministry, and we got no, no nibbles at all. So we, it's just basically sold to someone we don't have no idea what they're going to use it for. Right? But this is, this is the, this is the thing, is that the investment, right, that what's going to happen with the proceeds of the building is Pastor Cooley and I are going to basically have we're we're going to be dividing ministry now, and uh, United Temple Church of God of Christ is going to become the new home of Redemption Gate Mission Society. Praise God! And, and the, and the, uh, the, the, the his half of the proceeds for that are going to remodel his church, going to put sanctuary on the building. I don't think it's enough. I don't think what he has is enough to actually do it, but it's going to get him long way down that road. Wow. And then the, the other, basically the other half of that is the money that uh, that's, that, that we invested at the beginning. It belonged, it was, it was basically the, uh, the, 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 the bank account of Abiding Truth Ministries, which was my first ministry, my deferred salary. Well, that's, that's what it was. And we bought this and then we spent the rest of that money we spent all the money that we had from that original ministry into this building, 150000 plus. And uh, so the other half of the proceeds of the building is going to come back to my control, and it's going to go to First Century Bible Church. Amen. And essentially, Amen. so I'm, I'm essentially receiving back what I donated <laughs> without interest. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's amazing. And, uh, but, you know, but the Lord, you know, but it, but just we've gotten all the use of this building, all the years of great ministry out of this at the same Amen. time. Amen. And so, uh, so that's the, you know, so there's no, there's no pot of gold here, you know, but there is the perpetuation of the ministry that we started. Amen. Amen. Thank that, you, that, Father. That the, the work of the Lord is being done and that basically the fruit of the of the, the the profit, if you will, is being plowed back in, being reinvested right here in the city that we came 
to, to transform through the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes, and that's just so where, where things are going to go from the ministry here um, uh, in terms of both of us is that um, I'm going to resign uh, from the board of directors and Keith and, and Denise uh, are going to follow me to uh, First Century Bible Church. Um, Pastor Cooley is going to recruit um, and we talked with him, I think he's going to go this direction. My advice is, and, I, and he, he seems to be happy with it, is uh, to recruit replacement board members from the unity group, right? The pastor's unity group that's going on wow. to sort of integrate okay. Redemption Gate Mission wow. Society into that kind of a marriage of ministries. Yes. Um, um, because then I, I've been an impediment in some ways to the, to the growth of this ministry because of my political background. I'm hated desperately by the hard left mm -hmm. and they will do anything in their power to sabotage anything that I do mm -hmm. and so the so, fact that I remained on the yeah, board yeah. and the fact that I had anything to do with ministry always reduced the effect that we would have mm -hmm. had because it came with enormous opposition all the time right. so why, why do they hate you so much I'm not going to go into that right now <laughs> <laughs> just ask <laughs> around buy <laughs> 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 one of his books he's aligned with Jesus that's yeah, right and, likes, yes. so so my withdrawal from the Springfield, uh, from Springfield, is a benefit. It's a net benefit in the sense of community goodwill. And that pastors that might not otherwise have been willing to get as much involved will now be more ready to do that because they won't be afraid of getting tarnished with the same brush. You know, it's what unfortunately that's what happens when you are targeted for persecution. The people around you. We had some of the best people in this room and that have been through these, this room over the, over the years. One of the best people we've ever had came because of that persecution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said, I want to be near a pastor who's standing for the truth of the Lord. Amen. 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 That was awesome. That was awesome. That's how most of this work got done, is because of people like that. But the reality is in the world, that there are a lot of people that are very afraid of controversy, especially pastors and other uh, ministry leaders. And when they see someone who's getting hit like that, they just, they, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm behind you, way behind you. You take the bullets first and I might show up later. Yeah, so, but anyway, and everybody's on their own path. And if you belong to Jesus Christ, He's going to complete the good work in you. Amen. We don't, we don't criticize if somebody's not as far as we are on the path at the time. Right? right? We just pray that, that the discipleship that's going on in their lives will, will, will move them along in the right direction. But anyway, so now Redemption Gate Mission Society is going to be able to be more integrated with the existing unity movement that we helped to start back in those days. In 2008, we came in here with the goal of unifying. And yes. you know, we had three years. This is really remarkable. This is one of the things that's going to be in the book. It's utterly remarkable that we arrived January 5th, 2008 hmm. to do this ministry, and that despite all of the hatred that was already here, oh, and people working behind the scenes to try to drive me out, we had no public opposition for exactly, exactly three years. Nice. On January 5th, 2011, I got a front page hit piece on the Boston Globe in which they exposed me, they went after me, they focused on the, on the on Holy Grounds Coffee House, and that began a season of heavy-duty persecution. Rocks through the windows, protests in front of the building, uh, con, you know, constant media uh, assassination, all of that. But God gave us that three years, and in that three years, we laid a, a wonderful foundation that they could not knock over. They right? could not knock it down. He built the walls, right? Yeah. Like that's the first sermons that we did was Nehemiah. Right? Wow. We rebuilt the walls. Yes. That's what's on the website that Keith designed. Right? Yes. That's the image. That's yep. the image, is the wall, is wow. Jerusalem and the scripture about let us rebuild the walls Amen. to take yes. away the reproach yes. of this city. Yes. Amen. Right? And we did that in those three years. Yes. And from that point on, they could not knock it down, no matter how hard they tried. <laughs> One man made that possible, 
and that was Pastor Cooley. Amen. Right? Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. point they basically made me a pariah oh, yeah. and at, at that point and I had to I had to step back and but Pastor Cooley stepped in at that point Thank and they you. couldn't yes. take him down they knew they couldn't he yeah. had stature yes he yeah. earned it yeah right? he had stature and he had guts and he yes, had knew yes. <laughs> and so he pressed on he essentially we just passed the baton he got in that harness and he just yes. plowed it Thank down you, as fast Jesus. as he could be going before. Yep. And everything got done. You know, we did stuff in this city. Thank we got you. things done here. Yes, thank yeah. you, Lord. Four things we did on our that's five. Four <laughs> things we did every year, right? We started out, we had family day. Family day was the first thing we did yeah. because that's what they did. Uh, re right. the new generation did in, the, wow. in, in all these countries. They wow. had an annual family day focusing on the natural family, traditional marriage, and the importance <laughs> of family to society. Amen. The first thing we did was family day, and the first one was in Blunt Park. Yes. The next year, we switched over here to, to uh, magazine. magazine Park, and it, it was there <clears throat> ever after. It had it every year from that point. Yes. Then we did. We brought back the March for Jesus. Yes! yes. That's right. And we did that every we did that every year. And then we would march from here down to City Hall, where this many people would show up, nobody promoting themselves, everything nope. focused Just on for Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And then we would have all the people line up on the steps it was and the pastors line up at the front of the front and Amen. pray in each language, right down the yes. line. Yes, yes, Lord. Uh, yes. Then we started a um, we started a, a uh, Thanksgiving banquet. Yes. We did that, and then we also had a spring uh, seminar sort of thing we did. But the two big things was Family Day and March for Jesus. But uh, you know, the, those uh, those were great days. It's all going to be in the book, and it's uh, I got I got four thousand pictures. Wow. that have accumulated over the years of most of the stuff. What I'd like you to do, if you go to, if write this down if you don't have it, it's scottlively.net. I was intending to have a enough to put out as a paper manuscript of all the pictures, but um, I had some things, one, one thing happened, and so I'm okay with it, but my sister died. My sister just died. We were going to visit her tomorrow. Oh, so sorry. And, uh, was she lying here at Shelburne? She was in Greenfield. Greenfield. And, uh, she, and we, were not, we were never all that close. And I had really been had a chance to say my goodbye. She was fairly lucid the day of my mom's funeral. Yeah. So I, I, that's why I figured that was probably the last time I'd see her. But as we were deplaning in Boston on Wednesday, um, I got the call from my little sister saying that she passed away. And, uh, but it threw me for a loop. But my, my whole writing schedule and everything was oh. just gone, and I couldn't get done with it. But I, as of this, I stuck. I got up at four o'clock this morning. I got all the texts that I got written so far, and I started plugging the photographs in at scottlively.net. And it's if you go to Scott Lively Books in the button bar, at the top of the list of Scott Lively Books is called To Redeem a City. And you can go in there, and you can uh, uh, you can read what we have and see the pictures. If you are have had anything to do with the ministry over the years, you know, and you want to make a contribution to that, to write some little blurb or whatever, just get it to me. Oh. Send it to me to, me, to the email that's at the website, and I'll include that. I will need help identifying people in photographs because I don't remember everybody's name. The, the years are weighing. <laughs> and, uh, and and I'm, I'm going to keep keep putting that out, and uh, and and I just uh, I think it's it's a wonderful blessing that you all came uh, today for this final gathering mm -hmm. at this building, and uh, we're just praying. Let's just let's just close it out with a prayer. We're going to stay. We're going to feed you some pizza for lunch mm -hmm. if you're interested, and uh, and then we're going to do a Bible study. I can't. I was going to live stream the Bible study, but I, but I forgot my computer. Oh, no. I got everything on there, so 
Right. Um, any, any chance of some Q&A or... Uh, sure, Q&A. Okay, could, could I lead off? Go ahead, please do. All right. Uh, 